Okay, well, it's 7 o'clock, and uh, we have everyone here, so let's start this meeting with the Planning Commission, Bill Springs. Want to call the roll? Yes, indeed. Reed? Here. Sims? Here. Stiles? Here. Pelzel? Here. Abraham? Here. Also present is uh, zoning staff person, why can I never get your title right, Denise yeah. Sawyer. Um, that, there we have it. Okay, so we have an agenda. Uh, anyone have any questions or comments on that? Uh, if I want to add anything. Uh, if Are I, we discussing the new business today? Um, no, I mean, as far as that, no, there's no conditional uses. Uh, in, uh, 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 it's, in the <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's simply just a discussion about the discussing lot. Okay. Yeah, actually, please ask me if this would just to yeah. cover quickly. Um, it's about parking at the place, and um, I suggested that, that we just have a discussion here before they go through a bunch of groups and that have us to tell them. Okay. So that was, so I just wanted to, so we could kind of gauge what we all want to think Okay. Okay, so uh, we have minutes. From the 11th, not uh, April. Yeah. Does anyone have any comments on that first page? How about the second page? Third page? If not, so we'll make a motion to accept these. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Oh, uh, stay. Are we here? No. Uh, communications, we don't have any. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, council report? And I missed council meeting, so I don't know. Okay. That's brief. Uh, Judy, did anything come out of council there? Uh, the only there's upcoming is the proposed sale of the eastern portion of Sutton Farm, and that's of, an, of any interest to planning commission. Uh, I don't believe there was anything else relevant. Okay, thanks, Judy. Okay, so that puts uh, citizens' comments. Matt, could you move your microphone? And Chris, if you talk, you'll have to move yours as well. Okay. Uh, this is a point of the agenda where if anyone has any comments, it's your chance. Okay, if not, then we'll go on to the public hearing. So this is the uh, public hearing for the two, um, the, the sign ordinance and then the modification of the definitions to put that in line with the new or modified sign text. Do you want to take this discussion? Sure. Um, we just had a few more changes at the last meeting. Um, putting again, we made sure the order uh, was changed a little bit. Um, then we did agree to go with uh, changing the word neon to internally illuminated, and we were restricting that type of sign to just the 2B districts. Um, and then uh, everyone had agreed to add the word permitted signs and permitted total signs in the B and I districts and, and increasing from two to three types of signs and from three to four total signs. Um, and also putting, you know, uh, the word allow and striking uh, the part where it says on any lot regardless of the number of times. So we're basically doing it by principal building now. Um, we also included is a the sign table and we actually do have it now finished with all the coordinating um, names across the top. Can I ask a question? I guess uh, I should ask it before. When on the part that we I, I remember we changed the you know the number of signs. Um, the question I had was you said for principal building. What does that mean? I guess I didn't ask that last time. Because I'm thinking about a lot that would have a number of buildings on it, but maybe there would be one that we consider principal. 
it's, it's a good question. I mean, right now, for example, we have 88 Dayton Street, and we have uh, the zoning code has always considered that one structure, even though there's actually three <coughs> or four buildings and they're attached together, because uh, the majority of it is on one lot. Now there is two lots there. Part of the part of the other structure does carry over, but unfortunately, they've always considered that to be um, one structure, and therefore they're not allowed to have very many signs. I mean, if we want to tweak that a little bit more, I I think it's such a rare um, thing that would come up that I guess you know they always have the option of the BCA. Because I know when we were talking about it um, at our last meeting, Rose brought up Mills Works, where there are all these, you know, and some of them are attached. So I, I guess I was sort of saying that each building would be allowed a number of signs. But it sounds like now that, that there may be one that would be considered a principal building. Typically, the principal building might be in a residential is your house yeah. and then of course then the anything is like um, if you had an apartment or a garage that's an accessory to the principal um, I don't know I mean in the case of in the case of businesses it's just so rare we only have a few locations like that mm -hmm. um, but it is a question that maybe we could clarify it a little bit better because it has um, held back people that have businesses in the works Mm -hmm. um, and their only option is to go before BCA. Um, we were taking out the idea of didn't matter how many, uh, the whole language about regardless of the number of tenants. Um, and we took out the lots. On a, on a lot, right. Because I, and I don't want us to have to go back to them not being able to vote on it tonight, but I always wondered if taking out principal just per building. Well, we've been making modifications here and still yeah, approve it at best. Um, I, I just, you know, I had just been thinking of it more because I know just the discussion last time and our thought was, okay, then that would take care of it for the various tenants there. Because if we know that if that's an issue for them having to go before zoning, I mean, not, yeah, before zoning. The, 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 I don't think the issue was resolved. I mean, like, I think the the discussion that we had, we we upped it from three to four. But I, I mean, I personally still have issues. I, I, and I think what's going on with eight to eight really is an example of this not working. And I don't know the changes that we made. We shouldn't change just because of that one particular instance, but it's an example of that yes. being a problem in the locations that we have multiple tenants. They need more than four signs. Well, I think we were all in agreement that we didn't. It didn't seem to make sense for a new business to have to come to zoning appeals yes. just to get a sign. Yes. Yes. Just because someone moved in and someone else moved out, it, it seemed like an added burden. Okay. What What about the the old schoolhouse on Dayton Street? Because I see that they put up the beginnings of a sign. Yeah, that was approved by me. Okay, so yeah. so are they going to be allowed to have to list multiple tenants on that sign? Yes. Okay, yeah. so. Um, but they're following a ground sign. They're not a business center sign. They're okay. following a ground, ground sign. sign. Gotcha. But we don't limit what they what the language is on okay. the sign. Okay. Yes. But so they follow. <clears throat> They're not allowed to have just a center sign in a... Right. So they had to follow the measurements mm -hmm. okay, of non, okay. non-residential signs in a, a non-residential business in a residential okay. area. Okay. Yes. I think on the issue of this uh, principal building, the idea is that um, the code is designed to uh, address the general rules that you want to have. It can't isolate in on unique circumstances, and that so there's a process in place, though, so which the variances can be requested. And the issue that you would run into is that signs per principal building. I think that everyone would know what that means. It's a principal building. Well, does that apply to out structures? Maybe you want to sign there. Well, 
if you don't have that, that qualifier of principal building, you'd have a, a morass of signs by people saying it's a structure. Um, but what you have in place is a permitted use um, under normal circumstances. Okay, so we know the use permitted use, but somebody could request a variance in those other situations. So I think that the spirit of it, and I think Denise has, has reflected that as the zoning administrator, you, you try to accommodate people's requests and you work with them. Uh, and if you need to have a variance, there's a mechanism to go and do that. You do, but in this one, it's specifically referring, it's not talking about all areas, it specifically refers to B or, or I district. I mean, I think, I think we need to think about, like, what the, what, what are we trying to accomplish by limiting signs in B and I district? There should be a limit, obviously. What that limit could be is, you know, variable. And what, you know, like, I guess, like, what is necessary for a business like the 888 or Mill Works or, you know, King's Yard, like, they, they should be allowed signs for each of their tenants. Like, why, why is that, why is that not, I don't know why that's not, um, you know, a better catered to in, in the zoning code. You know, I don't know if, Susan, if, if they specifically put that language in there because it wasn't clear, as I struggled with, what what's permitted versus what's exempt. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if they threw that in there as a way to say, well, that will keep it from being too crazy because you have all these types of signs that you can have exempt. Um, but that's why I went ahead and thought, well, if we clarify that by saying permitted, that kind of takes care of the exempt, exempted signs. Because then the exempted signs, some of them have specific amount. You can only have like one per street from each or one per lot. Um, and I, I don't know if that's why they put that, if they put that in there about B or I district as a way to try to control. Well, because you can't have an name plate, right? And that's two square feet. Of area and that is a does not require permit. Is that what you mean by the overlap there? Correct. I mean, like uh, like uh, the property 888 Dayton Street, how they have quite a few nameplate signs, which are those signs uh, that are on their uh, the windows by the doors. They're like they're two, it just has their name mm -hmm. and um, suite number. I mean, we're actually having a BCA hearing on Wednesday night for DMS on signs. And, um, you know, uh, in total, I took photographs and labeled all of them. And there's like 16 different signs on the property. But that's counting everything from your uh, passing your seatbelt on the way out sign to a handicap sign to a security alarm sign. But those are all incidental and don't require. So at a building like 888, right? There are only three types of permitted signs. So they can't have more, four different types of permitted signs and four total permitted signs. And they have how many tenants? Right, they have seven. But, and but, that is seven. A, but that's a PUD though. It PUD. Is a, but it's, it, it's a PUD, but the way the code reads is for each business within that PUD, then they that business, you have to follow whatever it relates to in the code. So if it's like a medical office, and the medical office is allowed in B2, then what are the restrictions within B2 on signs? Um, but there are seven businesses in there. Because DMS actually has three businesses. They have the data mailing services, they have And legally it's one is it one principal building? What is a well, principal building? Yeah. I mean I guess like what what are 
what are they even, what is the variance that they're asking for? Are they asking for more <coughs> signs allowed here? As it stands now, what is their, <coughs> does BZA decide that? What the variance that BZA they're granting? BZA the variance on the, the, the number of signs, yeah. And so they're asking for how many signs? An increase. Of how of, many? Of, <coughs> it would be one if we pass this as it is, because they're at four right now. They're at four so total signs, and so how many different types do they have? Two. Two. Two times that they're asking for four signs. So under this, they but, would get but one I'm sorry, there's already one. Right now, there's already, um, there's two different types right now. Um, but there's four already. They're asking for uh, one more than that, so it's really going to be five because there's a, a wall sign and then they're asking for a total of four ground signs. But they could also, if I'm correct, if I understand you, on the buildings, it's themselves they could have signs. They but they could, but they've already met that total allotment. Okay. So okay. that's what they're going for the variance on. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so based upon this discussion, is there some do we want to try to change this? Do we want to think about some modifications? Well, it seems like there's a process in place that they can go to to get addition. Right. So. Right. And, and to me, as long as they have that process in place, then, then I don't see, I don't think you want to change it. What do you think, Bruce? I think the process is excessive. I think I, okay, so I don't, I haven't heard an argument oh, oh. for why they should be only allowed four total permitted signs if there's seven. Okay, so what modification, what kind of language would you suggest? Because I'm not adverse to that either. I think it's it's somewhat onerous just for your business to have one more thing that you have to do. I agree, and you don't really know how the zoning is going to deal with it. I mean, maybe they're going to say yes, maybe they're going to say no, so I think yeah. they're, you know. I, I guess, like, um, um, so are they going to, uh, do they have a business, are they going to have a business district sign, or just the four the I guess like I have a business a business center sign. A business the, center that size yeah. of one? No. No. I I kind of feel like I I don't feel experienced, you know, qualified to unless I like have examples of what that would mean. Like is this how restrictive most places I'm sorry I'm complicating this, but like is this re too restrictive? compared to other places, like we only have like how much industrial business space. I guess I'm not sure. I don't know. Adam, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I was I wasn't here last time, oh, I just want to say that. Um I, I, I do I, I don't think that I mean in the in the situation where like a new business comes into a situation where they kind of do a business park like that. I mean yeah yeah I don't I don't see the value in to I don't see how that would I mean, I, don't know. I, I, I can't suggest any better wording though either. Um, well, what are the ramifications that we say one per business? Yeah, th that's what I wondered if we maybe we could change, you know, that sentence about the maximum number and base it on the number of tenants or the number of businesses mm -hmm. and not this by principal building. And what would that do, Denise? Would it ripple through things and mess things up elsewhere? Um, like, oh, I have an idea, like you could limit the number of ground signs, 
um, like two per, uh, I don't know, limit the number of ground signs, but allow, you know, um, an additional wall sign or an additional this, 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 or this kind of sign per each separate legal entity, tenant, or business. You know, what I think about, and I saw a building in, uh, in, in uh, I think the center building. It was a long building. They had one sign that would give them the address, but each business had a sign, a small sign like that, over their door. When they find it at 10 mm -hmm. To me, that shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I guess, well, like, I my, my understanding yeah. of signs actually is that, like, less, you know, no signage is less accessible. You know, like even if it's an industrial space, I like to know what things are when I'm driving mm -hmm. by them. And like, which, if I'm looking for the doctor's office, which driveway to drive into, I don't, I mean, excessive signage is bad, but I think like informative signage so shouldn't be restrictive. I don't know where that line is between excessive and informative, um, but that's where that's where I'm coming from, and you know, like I don't want our business districts or our industrial districts to be sort of inaccessible places for the person driving by. You know, like feeling far away from the community, and I think signs actually do some good in in. Con connecting us to the employers and businesses in our community. What do you think, Denise? Um, I, I, I personally feel that just what we've already suggested is good. Um, that uh, when I go to this when I do this BZA hearing um, on Wednesday, we are going to take into consideration at that hearing the fact that there are like seven different businesses. So even though this person's coming forward, I want them to look beyond that and possibly give us a little bit more leniency. So oh, I don't have other, other businesses within that coming and asking again and having to go through the BZA process. So, so once, if, if one of those tenants changes, Will they have to come before the BZA again to change their sign? If the sign's already been allowed, as long as they don't, if they just change, amend the face of the sign, if they're not doing a completely different sign, mm -hmm. then they can stay with that. But as far as the, with the number of signs that are allowed there, if that had, if that amount hasn't changed, I don't see why they would. What if like the square footage doesn't change, but like the dimensions do? No. The, the square, I, I, I'm not seeing, I mean, I, I understand the square footage, but it's not a, I mean, I don't see in here, I have not seen in here, and maybe I missed it, where you take into consideration everything that's allowed and can divide that by the number of tenants and each gets a certain amount of square footage, you know, like an yeah. aggregate amount. That's not what I was saying. It's like a tenant makes a sign, right? And it's approved. And then a new tenant gets there and they, you know, their name is different and they want a different sized sign, but it's the same or less square footage. Would they need to come back to BZA? No. no. Probably not. Okay. It would have to be something larger. But I mean, yeah. you know, some, some, Zoning codes do have like an aggregate amount, and you could do something like that, um, not to exceed um, not to exceed the the allowable square footage within this uh, range of maximum range. The problem is that you just don't know what type of sign because each type of sign has a different square footage. Right. And I think that's why they stayed away from that, probably. 
So what if there was an overall permitted, permitted signs per principal building um, and no, like, and if there were an addition, I don't know, an additional for, I had an idea that I lost it, sorry. Well, I mean, you could say that you could have one for business plus one business center sign or something like that. <coughs> um, so if you say one for business, then you take that just one, one per business, then that wipes out the aggregate sign or the ground sign or whatever up on the street yeah. that has everybody on it. Right. I just don't, I don't think it'll come up enough that we need to change this dramatically that we, we've got the BZA process and, um, and I think that will work for us. Is there any indication that this was discussed at the when we were working with the, the village was working with the consultants and I don't remember. Yeah, it was kind of that's why we're here. Loose end. Well, I knew that there were some things that weren't weren't discussed fully, but it seems to me that this would have been something that, that might have at least come up in conversation. And, um, I don't. I don't remember the big discussion. I'm wondering if, if it's of any help just to, you know, frame it around your central business district or an area of town where you think, in general, the number of signs seems reasonable and satisfactory and not not excessive. It seems to work reasonably well there. There are areas, for example, in King's Yard where that's a pretty different animal. Does it does it work? Can the, the zoning code as it stands work for that area? just to be able to sort of frame, this really falls outside of a norm and we maybe don't want to zone around something that falls, it's an outlier. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to sort of pull you into, uh, what do we want to basically legislate here and what do we want to allow to fall outside of what is our accepted sort of standard? We're just throwing that out there because it seems like there's a lot of, I mean, it's a confusing issue. I mean, there are very different areas of town. Right. So does King's Yard, the businesses there, do they have to, have there been any that have to come before the BZA? Any no. requests? No, I mean, they would be grandfathered in. I mean, unless okay. um, unless one has, uh, unless the business changes, then, um, and, I've, and I know about it, then it becomes uh, just a change of use. And oftentimes, maybe they'll just use the existing sign. Okay, so they were grandfathered in. Okay, um, so we've got to round all this. So let's <laughs> let's do this. Let's keep that in our in our heads and um, and let's open a public hearing and we can come back to this. Um, well, I think that I interrupted Denise and I don't think she's finished with her. What um, she was saying. Let me, see. Uh, let me just. Oh, um, I think everybody saw the table. Um, so that is the table. It's in the code as table A, so it will now be much clearer for people to be able to see ground slash freestanding are both considered interchangeable. Um, and then prohibited signs, we, the request was that uh, higher than six feet, we, we're not prohibiting a person to put a sign on a single pole, but it can be higher than six feet. Um, and then we, there was a discussion uh, regarding political signs, and I asked Judy if she could go on her group. Uh, what is that? A municipal league or uh, Ohio Municipal Clerks Association? Ohio Clerks Association. And those, this was the responses we got. We received back from them on. Some regulate it, some feel that they can't regulate it at all. Um, and I didn't know what direction you wanted to go with that.
if we wanted to leave it the way it originally was, or if we... Right now we just say it had to be removed at some point, right? Yes. Um, Ten days after the question. Is that what? What's the number of the original where we talk about these? Political signs. Um, the only thing that we had was signs shall not be placed in the street right away. It was twelve sixty six oh five and the attachment. matter 
uh, most candidates uh, are, are pretty good, not all, but most, about making sure their signs come down um, and trying to follow that guideline to avoid the clutter. Um, and But I, my gut is that having something in the code is not inherently a bad thing because it sets a guideline. Um, whether or not you want to go then to the next step to say, let's have a sanction for violating that ordinance, that's a different discussion because when you start taking the opportunity to have punitive measures, then that's when you're more likely to run into challenges. Um, and then whatever path the planning commission wants to take, I'd really like to look at that language because I'm not prepared to weigh in as to whether or not something would, would potentially withstand scrutiny. Uh, without getting some guidance here, and then I can talk to Denise about tailoring something to what this body thinks it really would like to see in terms of moving something on to council. So, have you looked at the language that is proposed? I have not. I have not. I, would, yeah. I, I have not. So, um, we can take out. Not, not specifically as to, to preparing for this meeting, no, I, I didn't know where you guys wanted to go. Um, if, if we wanted to take out the, the only one sign for each can or issue is permitted per lot, um, however, two signs are permitted if the lot is a corner lot, and just and leave in what, like Chris said about you know what that is specific to candidates or issues appearing on a ballot in election sanctioned by the board elections, and the other part about signs that when they can be placed and when they should be re removed by and. Part of the reason I thought that was really important is because we do get a barrage of phone calls here and then normally um, it's forgotten what it was and then, and then somebody ends up calling the Board of Elections to see what, what their rule of thumb is on that and we just kind of go around and there isn't anything that we have written. So if we have this. So the Board of Elections doesn't have a guideline on this? The state It's actually doesn't. the different municipalities. How they want it seems like the state should have some like guidelines for what a municipality has the right to do. Home rule. Yeah. Well, I, but they don't. Well, I mean, theoretically, it's home rule, rule which means we can do what we want, except for when it comes to handguns and fracking and a bunch of other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I would like to take out the since it's, I don't think it's really been so much of an issue, I'd like to take out the one sign okay. candidate or issue and the two signs permitted if it's a corner lot and leave all the rest in. Okay. Yeah, I, can agree. I agree with that. I do too. Yeah. I think that's a good change. Yeah. Yeah, because that's why I'm very good at the last one. Are you comfortable with the 10 days to take it down or do you really want to? Make that a little shorter. Right? Uh, thirty, 30 days, days is fine. Well, thir thirty, 30 days, days before, ahead, but it's yeah. a ten days after. Well, ten days. Is, okay. I think that's a good number. Yeah. So, does that mean that um, because the primary is over, like you know, Bernie and Hillary signs come down, or we yes. get? Yes. That's technically what that would be. Right. Okay, and then they, people would be able to, to put, put, them put them back up 30 days prior. Okay. Trump signs too, obviously. <laughs> Don't want to forget to mention Okay. Um, the last thing that I have on this um, before we go into definitions is the um, part here about obsolete versus um, no, what non-compliance um, versus non-conforming. It was uh, section 126606 for non-conforming signs. Um, and what I basically said, the requirements for obsolete signs came a couple sections before requirements for non-conforming signs and the zoning lighting, which was a bit confusing to interpret, so it was suggested at the last meeting that staff place the non-conforming language immediately after. However, the zoning requirements for obsolete signs is in within section 126609, inspection and maintenance. So I'm suggesting a reference to both 
in each of these sections in order to clarify the code for zoning use. And the examples I gave were in 126606 nonconforming signs. When we talk about um, what that means, um, I'm also referencing 126609B3 obsolete signs. And then I do the same when, I, when there is the language. I'm not changing any language. I'm just simply mm -hmm. referencing each other. So good idea for this part, okay? And that's it for, for that. Um, there also isn't any anything in there about one permit per sign, and, and I'm not. I'm trying to be pretty lenient on that. I mean, if somebody comes, it's usually businesses anyway, and they come with one permit for two or three signs. That's good. Kind of our economic development. Yes. Well, there's no fee you, anymore either, right? There is a fee, but it's $15. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just too crazy. And then um, that's it for any, is there any more questions on that? Any more questions for this? So. Uh, let's go ahead and just do the one at a time for public hearings. We'll come back and do the definitions. Fine. That's fine. Okay, so there's no more discussion. We'll open the public hearing. Uh, this is, uh, if you have any comments or questions about this sign ordinance, um, come up and identify yourself and uh, tell us what you think. Um, if not, we'll close the public hearing. And to open the public hearing? I think so. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess it's back to us uh, for further discussion. Do we want to try and craft something with respect to the um, uh, Rose, your question about the, uh, the business center? Or do we want to okay, just lay that stand for now and see how it works out? And we're talking about that point about the principal number building. of signs permitted right. and the principal building. Right. Yeah. Um, what about like an additional sign um, allowed for each? You know, separate business over four total tenants in a principal structure. So if, if the tenants exceed four, which is the limit of the signs, they're one per extra tenant. Yeah. That sounds crazy. And keep the three different sign types the limit. So it wouldn't be like they would have like six different sign types. Does that make sense? So what you're saying is that a maximum of three types of signs mm -hmm. and then four total signs per building. Mm -hmm. Except um, an additional sign for each, each ten, maybe ten. Yeah. Pieces. Over if there are over four tenants in a principal. Yeah, if the building houses more than four tenants, they're allowed to have a sign per yeah. tenant. Okay, so let's say we get three types of four total permitted uh, unless the number of tenants exceeds four? Yeah, and then... And then one per tenant? One per tenant. Do you want to add one for the street? Well, so... So... So in that situation, right, it would be um, four total for four... If there's only four tenants, four total signs for the whole property, right? Mm -hmm. And then one additional sign for the fifth tenant. One additional sign for the sixth tenant. 
Okay. So. Um, so that means a little like King's Yard that the sign out by the trails would, mm -hmm. would, be, would, not, be would not be permitted because you're already going to have each business is going to have a sign. So we probably want to put something in that you have that I'm stuck. That is listing all. Okay, tenants. so. Or you want to say in your thing, instead of four, uh, if you say accept an additional sign for each business over three businesses. So over three. Yeah. So that would be the business center sign. So they could have a business, a business center sign. I mean, if, or if, 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 one, if all of those. If all those businesses in King Jard, they're all one type, probably. They're not yeah. going to put ground signs out. Yeah. So the business center sign is the second type. Yeah. But yeah. what they're saying is that each business would then. There's, there's like eight businesses yeah. that, that have eight, there's eight signs there, so you wouldn't be allowed that extra street sign. You wouldn't yeah. be allowed a street sign that the any oh, that's the street sign or first, ground though. sign or anything. If the street sign came first and the businesses came after the I guess, it, I mean, it depends. If it's a nameplate sign, it's not even, it's exempted anyway. It's yeah, but I'm not talking about a nameplate. I mean, like, sure, there are businesses in town that only need a nameplate, but, like, talking about a multiple tenant business, you can't assume that one of them is not going to need a, a business sign, like a a sign that's not a nameplate. Well, there is, <coughs> um, so let me add to the confusion. Yeah. Um, if you go to 1266.02, general provisions. Again, on page two of the last one. Yes. And you go down to, uh, sorry, the, the, it, you go to, by multi-tenant buildings. Mm -hmm. B five. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's still applicable. It's just the number of signs would be updated. So what we're saying is, we say one per tenant plus one for the one for the principal building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think that I think that's that's essentially what we're getting at. Okay. It requires a less lease work. Okay. Well, and I and I guess I wouldn't want to clarify by principal building because that may be a, a tenant. It, that we're saying it's one per tenant plus this additional sign that may list all the tenants. No, it's, it, there, it's sort of one per tenant plus one sign plus one sign. And only three different types of signs. They can have that extra sign be whatever they want. Right, they can mm -hmm. just say, yeah. change your, yeah. without it. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be any specific type of permitted sign. You okay with that? I have oh, spelling it. I'm writing it here. Um, how, how are you saying it? Okay, so we could say in any B or I district, a maximum of three types of permitted signs and four total permitted signs per principal building shall be allowed um, for, for a principal building with more than three tenants. Let's just take the principal building out of it and just say one per tenant plus one additional sign for the principal building. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So maximum of three types of permitted signs. Mm -hmm. Four total. No, no, take that no. out. It well, be, what about some of a property that doesn't have additional tenants? If it's one property, they can still have four signs. They should yeah. be allowed to have four signs, unless you don't want them to have four of their own. Right? I mean, 
Like if one business had, if one business in this district wants to use it. Yeah, it's just that you said one. Uh, that's one per tenant plus one sign per principal building. Then that means like if DMS is only in that building, they get up one sign on the lot, period. Right. That's not what we, is it? Right. It's a, additional signs uh, if, if the you number of tenants exceeds four. three. It it exceeds exceeds three. Exceeds, if it exceeds three, okay. and then you'll have the proper number of signs right. to have one for the whole lot. Yeah. Um, could we say something like, uh, in the case of a multi-tenant building, mm -hmm. one additional sign per tenant may be allowed, and it just may be allowed, and it can just be, or it can... Yeah, I think that's fine. May be well, you, you wouldn't even have to have the, the may in it. You just say, yeah, one, just this, say one additional sign, you know. If you just want to say multi -tenant. That does mean, well, I mean, above, above, what, above one, one extra, but I'm yeah. fine with that. I don't think property owners really want their place to be open. You know, signs are kind of expensive, but they don't want them over the sign. Can I, just for clarification, so are you actually adding a section then that says in any B or I district, in the case of a multi-tenant building, one additional sign per tenant shall be permitted? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I kind of wish we could add something that there is is if is if the is if the maximum has been exceeded. Yeah. You know, something like that. It's only in the case where the maximum, the maximum has been exceeded, exceeded and there's still these tenants right. that aren't covered. Right. right. Somehow. So, yeah. So yeah. I see what you're saying. How about you said in any B or I district, one sign per tenant and one additional sign for the principal structure with no more than three types of permitted signs shall be allowed. Well, because right now, if you are one business, you can sell out four signs. And so for, you could do that and say, and for total yes. permitted signs yes. per principal building. Yeah, they need more than one sign. Yeah, DMS needs more, yeah. than, more yeah. than one because they've got like shipping and receiving over here, and then they've right. got yeah. a parking lot over here. So it needs to say something about well, I guess I didn't realize we were, yeah. <laughs> We were restricted because that would be direction of signs. When you say shipping or receiving, not when they start putting, not not when they go to, to a size beyond what the directional sign allows, and they want to oh, put yeah. multi tenants' names on it. It suddenly becomes a ground okay. sign. Okay. Yep, I know. Okay. Um. All right. So you still want to be able to allow up to four signs per principal building. Yes. Yeah. Read what you just read and say, and then at the end, and four total permitted signs per principal building shall be allowed. And then after that, which we already have, can we say, in the case of a multi-tenant building, one additional sign per tenant may be allowed if the maximum number of signs has been exceeded. Has been reached? Yeah. Has been reached or... And I guess I'm just asking why are we saying may be allowed? Wouldn't we just say permitted? Is is allowed or just permitted? Shall be allowed. Maybe yeah. allowed. maybe it makes shall it sound questionable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shall be allowed. If the maximum number of signs has has already been reached or has been has been reached. Has been reached. Okay. So so far I've got in the area district district in the case of a multi-tenant building where the maximum number of permitted signs has been reached. One additional sign per tenant shall be permitted. And Rose, what, what's your? Oh, no, that's a. Did you want to? No, it, it, if that comes it, after that, that comes the, after. Right. Oh, that's that's here. So okay. It's fine. I, 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 actually, the, the, I think that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, or, so okay. Okay. And we're gonna figure out work with that in this. Yeah. Um, it goes right there, right? Okay. So right now, I'm going to read my part, and then and then you're going to read that. Okay, and this is how it's going to sound. Then. In any B or I district, 
a maximum of three types of permitted signs and four total permitted signs per principal building shall be allowed. In the case of a multi-tenant building where the maximum number of permitted signs has been reached, one additional sign per tenant shall be permitted. Good. Okay. Tomorrow we have to get our little sentences there. Yeah. Okay. It's all finished. Do you need a motion or are you good? You're good on that. Okay. So, is there any more discussion? No. Okay. So, at this point, do we want to entertain a motion to send this to council with the appropriate modifications that we came up with tonight? I can, I can follow this, right? Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, the first reading. Okay. That was my I missed yeah. the whole working group part of this. Um, I move that we approve this uh, first reading. Right? Oh, it's, 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 yeah. it's okay. We approve it um, and send it to council. So you're. What you're, what yes. you want to approve the text of the suggested text amendment? Suggested text amendment to Chapter 1266 with the um, discussed changes. Discuss changes. Does that work for you, Judy? It works for me. You can put 1266.03. Do we have a? Second for that motion? I second. But we're doing the whole thing. But we're doing the whole thing. Yeah. We're approving the whole thing. Right. With the revisions. With the revisions. With the revisions and. Okay, it's 1266. Yeah, we have the political side. And the political side. And the political side, that's correct. Right. So those are the two edits, the two changes we made. Yes. Political yeah. sides and the business center, multi tenant building. So discuss changes and revisions. Okay, so we have a second. Judy, you want to call the roll? Yes. Sims. Yes. Styles. Yes. Abraham. Yes. Myself. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay. Yay. Wow. <laughs> nice job, people. Okay. Okay, so now we have the uh, associated definitions that were changed. And I think this is much easier. Yes. Uh, and again, though, this is a public hearing, so we need to have discussion. Um, and then we'll open the public hearing and then close it and, and vote. Uh, Denise, do you want to, is there anything in here we that sticks out that we need to? No, uh, it's just simply um, the, we removed the definitions that did not relate to permitted signs, so only those are in 12.402, which reduced the total definitions from 21 to 15. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Denise? If not, We'll open the public hearing. Uh, anyone has any comments on the definitions? Please have at it. Since there are none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, any further discussion? Can we have a motion to uh, accept these changes and uh, recommend the council consider it? So moved. Second. Judy, would you like to call the roll, please? Yes. Styles? Yes. Sodell? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have one last item on our agenda, and that's this discussion of another gripping topic of parking. <laughs> um, touched on earlier. Denise, do you want to uh, kind of give everyone the uh, two minute? Yes. Um, the owner of the Mexican restaurant on Zena Avenue is wanting to put an outdoor patio in. Um, the outdoor patio would um, be on the south side of the building uh, where the mural is, if those of you who are familiar with the building. 
Um, it would be over a 600 square feet additional um, area, which increases the number of parking spaces. Um, he has filled out a conditional use permit and has paid the permit fee. Um, however, uh, the question came up, should he even go through the process of um, hiring an architect and getting all this uh, design work done if the parking is going to be problematic. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Can you clarify for the uh, picture that we have, mm -hmm. where is the south side? Oh. It's upside down. If you look turn around, it'll be on the right side. Yeah, south okay. side is going to be. It's, um, it's, 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 okay, so it would be. So is it going to be? It's the if you as you enter. Um, okay. It's yes. kind of like. Okay, here. so it so it would actually be right now. I don't think there's any parking right there. That's correct. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. There isn't any more parking because of the. the it increases us to the square footage. The, yeah, I understand that. Where's it going? The old drive-through, very old drive-through starts essentially. Okay. So right now he's at the number of spaces exactly that he needs for the size that he currently has. So if he wants 50 square feet, that would be yeah. In trouble. Right. So. No, he has some options. Very, very few, really. Unfortunately, I mean, I think well, you said he'd talk to this person, right? Yes. Because when I read it, it said adjacent parking, if. There is a walk. Yeah, but he hasn't known this, and that person is not. No, I mean, interested. but oh, if they permitted it, they, yeah, if no. they permitted it, these people aren't interested in having used the park. Okay. And it really, honestly, would only be overflow. I guess. Okay, there's two things to think about here. You know, the the square footage is more condensed. I mean, you have to have more parking spaces if you if you have liquor than he would have had before when it was just a food. Um, so, but he still is okay right now for, for having winter. I mean, there could possibly be a little bit of reconfiguring of the way the stripes are on that. Um, but, you know, he has to have two probably, I don't know if he has had one or two um, handicapped spaces. I don't know. All right now he has one. Could That's he, at the front there. Mm -hmm. Could he on put parking side. behind the building where right now there isn't? You know, it, it's like it used to be used for the drive through. Well, he, yeah. so, does he right. use drive through? Right, I know. I no, know. he doesn't use the drive through. No, he does not. And, so and could, that, yes, I'm wondering. So you could put possibly parking Possibly there. some spaces there. I mean, and, so and, then, and then what, you know, would the Planning Commission consider the fact that this is a seasonal? Right. Yeah. Right. That's season? what I was thinking. Yeah. Season number one. It's seasonal. And, and yeah. number two, I, I, I don't want it to end up like Peach's parking lot is. Where they squeeze more spaces in. And, I mean, you got you got to you got, <laughs> or, or try to back, to back up to, to get out. I mean, yeah. easily six additional parking spaces can be created just by like moving them back parking spaces forward and having right. I mean, almost like a parallel, like a, not parallel, I'm sorry, yeah, like, where you kind of go like this, this, this way. Go up, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let me talk. Talking about that, what, what does that sentence mean that you put in here that it says the zoning code for parking does not consider a usable floor area for seasonal uses? Right, that's what I'm saying is it, it just flat out says Based on the square footage of where you're serving food, you've got to count that as space, as as the uh, as usable. So it's saying so it's that means it's for. seasonal. You do have to consider that. But it gives, I thought it was excluding it. No, yeah, I say that there's no special. Okay. There's no special exceptions for okay. outdoor patios, and and I'm and I'm really wondering, you know. So so the question I asked, and I think Judy drove by, was does he have any bike parking? Anybody doesn't know. There's no, there's no bike rides. Yeah. There is kind of a sidewalk um, that you can ride all the way from from here, uh, you know, off the street. So, is there some combination of since it is a summertime use, bicycles are more used in the summer. Is there some kind of a 
give and take with respect to you know a couple of bike racks and a couple more parking places, is that going to be enough for us? Because the code does allow Because yeah, the code lets us have some flexibility. Right. Especially with we, you know, it's, it's it's actually interesting that you say that um, because at the time that I drove through, there were probably four bikes just thrown on the ground right behind the kitchen area, and I am assuming most of the employees rode their bikes to work. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think he'd be at all opposed to putting in a bike rack because it seems like that's the primary mode of transportation, at least for employees, it seems so. Yeah. And if he could put some more spaces behind the building, yeah, some where combination that, you know, that it looks like there is some space that you could. But I guess my question is what are we trying to control here? Is the lack of parking. For his business. No, 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 no. I, I'm saying, I'm saying in, in general, okay? Because I've gone in there, and all the spaces have been full. Yeah. Well, we're trying to so stop is from people who I are did. going to his business park right parking someplace <laughs> else. You know, because we. That's why the code is where it is, is what it is. Because if we allow him to add, you know, park. <coughs> Floor space, and then there's a parking problem on 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 properties that are adjacent. Then that's our bad. Right. Okay, that's well, that's what I was trying to get the clarification. Okay. So. Now you don't want to create a hassle for somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So I mean, right now though, like he's at limit, right? Do you, and people try to go there when there's no parking, and they get turned away, see? And they have to leave. But if there's more tables for them, they go there, and they park someplace else, their car is going to sit there while they eat. How many more places does he need? Well, right? Well, oh, more. And I guess, I, I know it looks like there is more land there to possibly they could take. Yeah, this but is kind of a... He actually well, did look into that, and yeah. And it's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, like it's 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 be very expensive. Yeah. He did look into that. So the business next door, are they open in the evenings, or is that just a daytime? They're a daytime. I don't think we can that's in that. We can't, but if he got their permission to use that because I think it's it says in there that you can use oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but he would have to bring that to us. Yeah, he would, but I mean if he was told that he consider that. She, she said she wasn't interested but in allowing that. But I mean, Oh they said they weren't interested. I had asked him if he could yes I, I, I told him if you could come with that as an alternative place to park that would be great. Yeah, I I, I think that, that they're I mean, what there is possible that on the north side of the building, there could be parallel parking, right? Because like people uh, could drive up. I don't know because like three spots. That's their exit. Yeah, that's the exit. Now, I mean, their exit is over on the right side of that white line. I mean, because people when people were, were so you're saying when the drive-through was there. Um, People were able to go around the people that were at the window waiting for their food. So you're just, but that's only a couple of spaces. So what I'm saying is you could make six spaces in the back and like. Well, more than six really, because one of the back is eight, that is not. But you could make six additional. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven additional. Eight additional. Yeah. Eight additional. And then like three spots part three or four parallel parking on the north side. I think I think he can configure his lock and get 12 more spaces in there. Versus. And if he can't, are we willing to look at the bike rack? rack yeah. as well? exactly. I think he's at least willing to come in front of the additional mm -hmm. you know, use if, if he's willing to do those. Yeah, if he, can, if he can get eight more spaces in a bike rack. What do you think, Susan? Yeah, I agree with that. You can still use it. Sure. Yeah. 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 Is it yes, one of yes, I guess that's the question here. He hasn't applied, you know, asked us for anything yet. He's just. I really mean, I think he should time. get. I think he should get our approval on the parking before he talks to someone about building the, the patio. Well, I think he has to do that. He has to get the permit before he can 
Yeah. 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 But there's still expensive down the road. Yeah, I think you could. And, yeah. uh, but you get it close enough that it wouldn't no, be. But what I'm saying is you should get the permit for the He's still the parking yeah. first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe that's worth the It sounds like we're okay with him giving it a shot. Giving it a shot with right. configuring his parking lot right. and yeah. we'll also consider bike racks. Yeah. 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 Probably just okay. we'll both feel right. Or it does the does the sidewalk cross this little bit of grass here? I don't think it does. It's hard to tell the picture, it looks like it might though. So yeah, I thought it did though. I'm it sure. does. It's oh, not a really from the nice street sidewalk. Yeah. 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 It's not talking about the sidewalk yeah. being bad. It's yeah. really the next the block over. Yeah. No, the next yeah. two blocks yeah. over. Sure. Two it's blocks not over. over. It's not his property. Well, that's the other thing. Is he can't really make any improvements to that sidewalk yeah. because that is not his property. Right. I don't. Uh, so, sort of on an offhand note, but when the water line went through and the sidewalk on the block where the um, where the doctor's office is was sort of damaged in that process and never done anything to, I mean, I thought the village was, re was responsible for the sidewalks and that the plan that the council put in was that when we do street work, that's when we update our sidewalks because of their, our responsibility. I don't know why that but, opportunity but that, that wasn't was, taken. That, that was not a, we repaired all the sidewalks that we damaged. Yeah, we but that's, what I'm saying repair, is what council. Yeah, but we did not repair if, if there was yeah. asphalt and not a sidewalk. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not like an official sidewalk. That's not an official no. side. That's, uh, that's like a bike like That makes sense. Because yeah. they did, I was thinking, I know that they did put all new sidewalks in on but, the avenue. No, but there, what the thing is, where yes, where you rip, where the where they ripped it up, they put in sidewalks mm -hmm. that you now have to. But what you're saying is where they're not sidewalks, yes. where they're just bypass, the village is not. Yeah, we did okay. not. Okay. Yeah. So those people could tear up those bike paths and they would, they would, they don't have, they don't have to do anything to them either. That's so sad. That, what, was that done? Is that what you're saying? Was that done? It was. What I'm saying is that that bike path on the block that the doctor's office is, where they dug just next to it and not damaged it at all, um, the nothing. I mean, it was covered in mud for a good month, like this thick. But um, the, the village is is saying that that's not a sidewalk. I was under the impression that it was like, it would be part, of, I haven't looked at the- But the contractors are usually pretty good about trying to restore, restore back right. what, yeah. what it was before. So I mean, if, even if they do a curb cut or something like that, yeah. you know, they're working on a right away. They, they but that, to but that sidewalk is barely navigable, is what I'm saying. It's not a sidewalk. It's not a it's, sidewalk. It's, it's, a it's a bike path, path and it hasn't been resurfaced for it's years. Pretty, pretty and what I'm saying is, I was sort of excited by the possibility that the, you know, that there would be a good sidewalk up to Dollar General, you right. know, yeah, when that, when that, because I remember Karen, I thought I remembered when that situation, when, you know, we were all excited about the, the pipe going through, that there would be a sidewalk up to Dollar General, but yeah, I don't know, I'm sorry, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Had to do a sidewalk. Yeah. Okay, so regardless of that conversation, <laughs> it sounds like we're okay with him taking the next step yes. and yes. trying to come yes. up with right later with this. Yeah. Right. That'll be coming to the next meeting then, probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, so that's it for our old and new business. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Major. Thank you, everyone.